To start out, this is a very dangerous project. I do not recommend anyone do this unless they know exactly what they're doing and they have experience with other high voltage. This is merely a how-to. I'm not responsible for your actions. So, let's get started. The parts you'll need for this project are a microwave oven transformer. You can get this out of an old microwave. You'll also need a three-prong power cord like this one. This one came out of the microwave, so simple enough. You'll also need a chicken stick, which is a PVC pipe with a clip on the end. I'm using a clothespin and a handle made out of electrical tape, just wrapped around the pipe. This isolates you from high voltage and is necessary for this project. You'll also need a few alligator clips or wires to connect everything together. And you'll need a couple of bolts. I'm using round head ones. They don't have to be matching or anything, they just preferably have to have a round head. Any metal piece will work though. Step one, take your microwave oven transformer. Also, you'll need your power cord. Don't plug in your power cord and take the three wires on it. Two are the hot and neutral, and then there should be a ground. Connect hot and neutral to the primary side of the transformer. These were originally connected to the wall. You'll be left with a ground. You'll have to scrape away some of the enamel on the outside of the transformer and connect your ground wire there. I'm going to use an alligator clip to do this. Like that. Now, I have two alligator clips connected here, and we're going to connect this to our bolt. One of our big bolts. I'm using the biggest one because that'll make it everything a little bit easier. This gets connected to your chicken stick. We're already half done. Your transformer on the output stage should have a few wires. There should be a lone wire and then a couple of wires that are grouped together like this. You do not want the ones that are grouped together like this. These are low voltage and they're used for the internal circuitry of the microwave. We can just push those to the side. Make sure they don't short out on anything though. Take the lone wire and another alligator clip and then connect the two together like this. Once you've done that, take your alligator clip and put your other bolt in there like that. I'm gonna slide the housing, we're gonna slide the rubber housing over it, but you still want the bolt to stick out a little bit. And just to make everything easier, I'm going to put them in a pair of helping hands. This will just hold everything when I'm making arcs. We're going to plug our power cord into a surge protector power strip. The surge protector power strip acts as a circuit breaker. It usually trips before your circuit breaker and it just makes everything easier to reset and it's also a lot safer. Plug it in, make sure nothing's shorting out, turn it on, and you'll hear a loud hum. That's normal. Take your chicken stick and stand back. Then make an arc. To make an arc, just strike like that. And if you heard that click, that was the sound of our power strip turning off, which means that we drew too much current. And if we flip that back on, transformer fires right back up. So, really simple to make. Now let's go into some more details. So, how does it work? This is simply a transformer that takes the 120 volts in my wall and steps it up to a couple thousand, around 2,000, we'll say. Now, when connected to ground, it'll spark, and then we can draw large arcs like that. 
because the electricity will arc between the two points. It's really that simple. For a more complex form, which I will show you in the future, you will need a couple of the high voltage capacitors from microwaves. I only have one currently, so I can't show you that project yet. But in the future, I will show you. During operation, this creates a lot of heat because there's a huge current draw to make the arcs and step up the voltage that high. Let's look at the temperatures during operation. Let's first try just the metal plate here. Pull up the sensor on there. 84 degrees and it's going up. Let's see how that changes if I arc it a couple times. Turn it on and it already heats up a little bit. Yep, that heated it up to 91 degrees. And that's just the coil here, or the plate. That's not even the warmest part of the plate. Yeah, that's not, that's going way up. That's probably going to hit 100 degrees. And now let's try the primary coil. Primary coil is dangerously hot. That's like 130 degrees. So, this thing is pretty hot. Okay, right now we're going to arc off of a solder joint. It creates a really cool arc. 